Hello, everybody. On this episode of Don't Blame Me, we have the fantastic and wonderful advice giver, Gabby Dunn. And one of the things that we talk about in this is um, a couple who's trying to have a baby, but uh, it kind of sounds like one of them isn't as ready and there's fertility doctors involved. It's a mature question. And uh, we also talk about a girl who met a guy at college orientation, seemed like he was great, and he sent her a playlist that was personalized for her, which personally I thought was pretty cringy. Uh, turns out, surprise, surprise, he sent it to another girl. So should she get over him? Our advice is definitely yes, but you have to keep listening because he sounds like a shit bag. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. Today, our fabulous guest, who's so well-dressed, is Gabby <sighs> Dunn. Thank you so much. This is all my girlfriend. It's really this cute. This is all, she's in fashion, and this is, a, this it's, is she picked this. It's a fashion outfit. Thank you so much. And the so glasses much. are fashion, too, though. These are, are these new glasses? Yeah, I had red ones yeah, when we like, last saw yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. I like these on you. I like, thank you so much. They're really cute. I like to go, if I had one red, we would have matched, though. Oh, yeah. But I like to go just, like, bit thick, colorful yeah. with the glasses. Well, you must have very straight ears, too, because I can't do straight across glasses because my ears aren't <laughs> at the same place on my head, so they're always tilted. How'd you find that out? Uh, trying on a bunch of straight hair sunglasses, <laughs> and then I went up to the Nordstrom. I'm like, these aren't straight. And then she put, put like, she's like, no, these are straight. I just don't think you're... Ears are straight. <laughs> wow. They're not good. symmetrical. They're not. Yeah, they're not symmetrical. So I have to wear round sunglasses so it's less obvious. And I have to get like my sunglasses adjusted so they're straight That's on me, even though they're not straight on other people. God, one, God bless that lady at Nordstrom <laughs> right? for telling you the truth. I tell you the truth. And two, and two like, then no one can steal your sunglasses because they no. put them on and they're like, what it's, crooked face person yeah. belongs to these? My best friend and I have the same pair of sunglasses and I was convinced for so long that they were different because she's just so much smaller than me and has a smaller head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they look way bigger on her and I was like, no, yours are bigger. And she tried mine on. It's like, ooh. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I have a very large head. I do too. Yeah. I have a big noggin. Allison says that large head means you're photogenic. Really? I don't yeah. feel photogenic. I don't know if that's true. It's <laughs> I, just a thing that she said to I'll me. I'll take it. Yeah. And then and then she has a little tiny head. And then my girlfriend has a small head too. So everything that that's mine looks ridiculous on her face. Oh, like all glasses so look funny. like it looks like she's doing some sort of like bit. Oh yeah. Like uh, did you ever watch um who was the lady that laid on the ground and pretended to be a clock? Um what? 10 second tidy. Uh Luna and Molly, a clown and her dolly, the big comfy couch. Yes, big comfy couch. She mm -hmm. was this woman who just had these like, they were like comically large, like they're like photo booth glasses that you'd have like at a bat mitzvah where you're like taking pictures and they're the yeah. big plastic ones. Yeah, she wore Wait, those. how old are you? 25 now. Oh, okay. See, I missed Big Comfy Couch. I also, for some reason, don't think it was an American show. It was. Was it? It was. I think it was Canadian. I, oh, whatever. I think it was like I one of those like- I that to be America too. <laughs> we, we, we wish fully. We, we wish. Don't group Canada with us. They're so much better. I want to, though. I, d I do, too, but I don't want to bring them down. <laughs> Our American president, Justin Trudeau. Up. Yes. In my mind. Only yes. the best yes. for my president. Yes. Oh. Very beautiful. Okay, guys, this is Don't Blame Me podcast. Uh, it's an advice podcast. Melissa and I are here. Hello. Gabby's here, too, but we already Hello. said that. And do, can we talk about your shirt for a second? Yes. Oh, amazing. Are you, are you menstruating? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I wonder yeah, we so synced up. Great. I don't know. We should be. Synced we should up by be now. synced up. Yeah, but yeah, this is a shirt from a company that I, uh, well, organization that I volunteer with ah. called Happy Period, where we collect uh, menstrual supplies for homeless women. And yes, they go deliver it's so to important. It. Yeah, so. I saw Candace's story on that the other day. Yeah, very cute. Um, and if you care about my shirt, we're also in the feminist thing. Mine says "Girls Support." girls and it's available on my shop if you want to go shopmarty.com guys oh, get my shirt so match cute. me that's really cute i support Isn't you it? thanks i support you guys Thank you. and speaking of supporting wow that's the first time any of my segues have ever worked <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be giving you guys advice uh so we've got voicemails to listen to and you guys called in to the number 310-694-0976 and all of our international listeners if you want advice from us email us with an audio file at meganpodcast at gmail.com and we're gonna give some advice and you're gonna be really great at this. I hope so. Hi, Megan, I'm from San Diego. I'm 25 years old and I've been dating this guy for about four and a half months now. Um, it all started and moved very quickly in our relationship. Um, pretty much after about two months, he asked me to move in with him and I said I didn't feel comfortable doing that so fast. 
um, that made him really upset. And he told me that if our connection really was that strong, then I would move in with him. That caused a fight, um, one of many, and I ended up moving in with him. He said from the beginning, though, that, and he always kept saying that I didn't have to pay rent or bills. Um, he would never let me clean up because he always said that I was his princess. Um, lately, he has been acting, he had been acting extra annoyed by me. He keeps telling me that uh, he doesn't like the way I talk, he doesn't like what I do, he doesn't, he wants me to stop doing stuff that I love doing by myself. Um, he wants me to stop talking the way I talk because he says it's not classy, etc. Today we had a big fight, um, again, one of many, where I told him that he was being an asshole and he got really upset and started rubbing in my face that he's the one that pays for everything and that I don't do anything. Um, I got really upset, so I left and I told him that I didn't want to be there with him anymore. Um, we were supposed to go to a concert together tomorrow, but he said today that if I left, he would, he would take another girl to the concert. Um, that obviously made me really upset, but I still left. And now he keeps texting me very angry messages and making me feel super guilty. Um, I guess my question is if you have any advice on how to get over it, uh, or how to get out of the situation and cut him off, com uh, cut him off of my life completely, um, I would really appreciate it. Okay. Well, first of all, you already know what you have to do, which is cut him out of your life completely. Mm -hmm. This person is abusive. Yeah. Uh, there is something called financial abuse. Uh, a lot. Uh, there's a writer named Paulette Parrish who talks about how women uh, should have a, a f off fund. Oh yeah. Meaning, yeah, yeah. if you are, if you need to have a, a, an amount of money to be able to move out of an abusive household, to leave a job where you're being sexually mm -hmm. harassed, to treat any sort of like if you are you know assaulted or whatever, mm -hmm. like you need to have money for that, which sucks, but. Um, y like you, you got to get out of there. You got to move out immediately. You got to block numbers. You got to, you got to just sever ties. Like you, any guilt that you feel is you being gaslit, mm -hmm. um, which is part of abuse. Uh, and you, you got, this person is bad news bears. Yeah. And I think your gut told you from the beginning. And I think there's probably a part of you that is upset with yourself for not recognizing that early. And you just need to like drop that because, Abu emo emotional and physical abu abusers in general are the most charming manipulative mm -hmm. people in the mm -hmm. world so there really wasn't a way that even though your gut told you that something was off with this he's gonna charm you into doing that kind of stuff so I wouldn't I would try and as much as you can take any of the guilt out of this because you didn't put yourself in this situation like he sought you out and mm -hmm. preyed on somebody who like he knows how to he knows how to manipulate people right and I think you need to first and foremost talk to and like friends, family, yes. like get a support system around you and devise a plan. Um, yes. And let people know what's going on. Yeah. Screenshot all the texts, save mm -hmm. everything. Because you're, if you want to get a restraining order, you're going to need mm -hmm. uh, um, evidence yeah. and witnesses. And you, and then have a place set, have a set up a place to stay and talk. I think the, the more honest you are with the people in your life, the more you're going to find that this is sadly super common. Yep. And that, women especially are always there to help out other women who are in these situations. Mm -hmm. um, if you, uh, I listened to Dax Shepard's podcast and he had his mom on and it's a great episode if anybody ever wants to listen to it. It's like very like heartbreaking, but also really inspiring. Cause she's just like, she talks about these like very sad, rough things that happen in her life, but she talks about them with just like, so, like just so black and white. Mm -hmm. And like, you're like, wow, you are so strong. And she talks about how she was in an emotion. She was in a physically and emotionally abusive relationship. And a woman came up to her at work one day who she really never talked to and basically just said, Hey, by the way, um, you live in our neighborhood and I just want to let you know, I'm just giving you a set of keys to our house. If you ever like like if you or, you or your kids ever need a place to stay or like come hang out and like be there. And she said she was like petrified because she's like had never talked, really talked to this woman and didn't know that this like had never told this woman that she was in an abusive relationship. And she just said the woman just knew. And yeah. like then when times got really bad, she took her up on that. And that woman was like there for her. So I think putting any of that embarrassment aside and really just being honest with everybody because yeah, you've got you to devise a plan because yeah. there's, he's going to, exactly what you're saying like gaslight you and manipulate mm -hmm. you into feeling guilty and feeling like you owe him these things you don't owe him anything you don't owe him shit like at all at all 
And so I think like you got to stay with a family member or mm-hmm. someone who can be there with you. And don't be embarrassed. Like say, you know, sometimes it's you feel embarrassed because you're like, oh, this person's doing all these things. And some, mm-hmm. for some reason you feel embarrassed. Yeah. But he should be embarrassed. Oh, he, he sh- won't be because he's probably a sociopath. Yeah. But he he should. And, and so like it's not anything to about you. No. And as much as he's telling you that that's the biggest issue is like that when people tell you that what things that you've done have made them react a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Nothing that he's doing is because of something that you've said or done. Absolutely. He would be doing it anyway. Yeah. He was going to find a way to do these things anyway. So just devising a plan, staying with somebody else while this all happens, keeping all of the receipts of everything Mm -hmm. and making sure that you're don't feel crazy. Take extra precautions. If you don't feel there's a really like thin line between emotional abuse and physical Absolutely. abuse. Absolutely. I was going to say, don't tell him where you are. No. Don't, yeah. don't post where you are. And don't and let your friends And keep everything tell. just in case you need to go to the cops. I would, I would, I would with automatically when you go to where you are not, and not tell him anything. So the, the, so when you get a restraining order from somebody who's done that, you, the, you have to, there needs to be you have to have it on police record that you um, have like you have to have your first call in. So you've had your first call where they right. know so they can like kind of track that. And then the only time that they're going to follow through with the restraining order is if that person has come onto your property. Right. But if you can give them the name and all the information beforehand, if anything, God forbid, anything did happen that's already in the system there yeah. and mm-hmm. it's already helping like protect you and start a paper trail. Yeah, it, exactly. Like mm-hmm. give it, give it. So like, as the steps go on, you've covered all of your bases and you need to be on the same page with everybody who you talk to this about, like with your family, like nobody's going to be talking to him. Right. Tell them everything. Don't try. And especially when it comes to parents and stuff, I think people feel like they don't want to hurt their families more and be like, well, I don't want them to know all of these things. Yeah, but they you have gotta to know. tell them everything because they're only going to be able to react accordingly and help you the best that they can when they know everything. Absolutely. And yeah, you have to delete them from everything. But yep. I think you have to sit down with your if you have a therapist, but if you've got like your parents or friends or whatever and be like, okay, so this is what's happening. This is is what I'm going to do. Yeah. We're not going to, I'm going to tell him over, don't, don't tell him in person, tell him over text message. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you're going to delete his number. You're going Mm -hmm. to block him on all social media, your friends and family. If any of them are with him on social media, they should also do the same and the same thing with blocking the numbers. And then um, you have a call into the police and just let them know that you were in an emotionally abusive relationship and you're a little, af- you're a little afraid of the person. Yeah. yeah. And let them know where you were staying and let them know, like, let them know, like his name, his address, the make and model of his car. Mm-hmm. And then keep everybody in your family in loops and stuff. And then not again, not to be paranoid, but like when I broke up with like an emotionally abusive ex-boyfriend, I had, I either slept at my friend's house every night or mm-hmm. when my friend slept at my house every single night mm-hmm. until like I was no longer absolutely terrified. Yeah. And I told my building manager where I lived being like, Hey, him and I broke up and I'm like scared shitless of him. And so he was like, great, cool. Our security guard knows like everyone yeah. here knows like he's not going to be allowed into the building mm-hmm. by any, like at all. And so is that for me, like, obviously it's like, a, you feel awkward saying this to like, of course, yeah. your lead, like the guy who but like works at security at your apartment, I watch but I was, like, enough it's tr- worth it. Yeah. I watch enough true crime oh. to know that like, we are often as women gaslit into mm-hmm. thinking that we're overreacting. And yeah. then like, then the person gets murdered and then they're like, why didn't mm-hmm. she do anything? Yeah. If you listen to my favorite murder fuck politeness exactly fuck politeness (laughs) Fuck politeness exactly yeah your intuition's always correct your gut is right especially with women too because like you there there's just a sense of uneasiness of like you're like i don't know like goosebumps and like you're like skin you have you know you have intuition yeah Yeah. because it's like that predator complex and that's not something Mm -hmm. that a lot of men yeah i'm glad that this call didn't end with you being like so should i break up with him like i'm glad you already know yeah which is, I think, is always the hardest thing to kind of for sure get over that. Yeah. But best of luck. You're going to get out this. You're going to be end. fine. Yeah. You're going to be great. You, you already know. It. Yeah. You got this. <sighs> On to the next call. Hi, Megan, Mel, and possible guests. I'm 22, and I met this girl on a dating app, and I can't tell if she actually likes me back or not. Uh, conversation started really slow, but for now, like a month and a half, we've talked, texted nonstop, uh, once I got her number, uh, we text every morning to every night, but I know she comes from a difficult past. She was in a very long relationship, like over five years, 
starting at the age of 15, and the girl ended up cheating on her, and she has a really hard time trusting people, and she's very shy. So sometimes she'll act like she's into me and, like, go along with it, but I've never met her. Uh, we've only known each other for a short time. Uh, I know she's a real person. I have her Facebook and stuff like that, but she won't even call me because she's so shy, and I can't tell if she's into me or not or if she's just really shy or if it's something to do with her past and how long she was with the ex. Um, she does talk about her ex sometimes, but not a lot. I don't think she is caught up on the ex. But I don't know. I just kind of want advice on what I should do and if I should continue trying for it or if I should not. Um, she did text me the other day when I admitted that I had feelings for her, and she said that um, she just thought that was okay and then did not say anything else. And then I said I was trying to understand what she was saying, and she's like, why am I hard to understand? And I said, yeah, but it kind of came off a little flirty, so, like, I don't know if that's a flirt technique or what, but, yeah, if I could just get some advice. Look, I'm afraid she's going to get fished. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I, because why would you be on a dating app if you're not looking to date? Oh, so, I mean, I think if you, that to me sounds, I would be on a dating app if, I've been on ones before when I was like, I have really no intention of actually talking to anybody, like to like going you're out not and talking just to anyone, flirt. But if you're, right. But if you're talking to them all the time. Yeah. That to me sounds like either she's in a relationship. Yeah. She's cheating on someone. Yeah. Or I just think if it's or not. Or she's not who she yeah. says she is. If it's not moving forward in a like reality type of way and you both live in the same city, then I think you got to cut your losses. Well, because that it doesn't sound like somebody who wants to be in a relationship. Yeah, it sounds are, like they're going to be happy with what's happening. And you're clearly and rightfully so not into just having a text relationship. Yeah. There's so many other people that could actually like give you a full, well-rounded mm -hmm. relationship that you should look for that rather than, cause I get it. Like sometimes I've dated or like casually dated people where I'm like the majority of our relationship is the fun of texting. Yeah. And that's great. But like, it gets hard when you mistake that for actual connection. Oh, totally. And that so easily can happen nowadays. Like you can be like, oh yeah, we're like dating. But then you're like, wait, I only see them like once every three weeks. And it's like, but we talk every day. Yeah. And it's like, do you? Well, that was my boyfriend and I, before we started dating, I wasn't dating anybody mm -hmm. because like we were just flirty friends. Yeah. And so like that part of my, like that part of my mind felt like that was occupied. Like it right. felt like that, that was being satiated. But I'm like, but no, we're not mm -hmm. actually dating. We're just friends and we text and we flirt a lot. So mm -hmm. you're occupying the time that I could be using to like text some guy or like meet somebody that I was actually into. And it's safe though. It's, it's safe so because think safe. about it. You don't have to, there's no risk of anything physical happening. Mm -hmm. You're not really giving yourself up vulnerably yeah. that way. You can't get an STD from texting <laughs> thus far. Uh, you can't get emotionally hurt. Can't get emotionally hurt. Like, there's not like there's basically nothing that can happen. It's just almost like a video game. It, you know, exactly. And I'm definitely guilty of yeah, me too. doing that. But I think that as much as her, if her past was really plaguing her that much, I think it's not fair for her to be String on you a, along. Yeah, and be on a dating app without saying like, just here looking for friends or not looking just for anything looking serious. Just looking to text flirt. Yeah. Why don't people just say that? I don't know. My friends have literally done this with, like have been in this situation where they're like, this person just never has any desire to meet and they just want to like text and talk all the time. I was yep. like, they just need a fucking friend. Like, yeah. yeah. And what? we're all like, I think a lot of people are very socially awkward. And so they use that as an excuse to like never hang out. But the thing is, yeah. even with friends, you have to like make the effort to make totally. plans. Like it was so foreign to me, but I had to really be like, at this restaurant, at this time, mm -hmm. we will hang out faces. Yeah. And like, so I think like if if you're not doing that, if that's not moving towards that, mm -hmm. I don't think you should occupy, like you said, yeah. that part of your brain because then you're, maybe there's someone in your real, like this is what I pictured. It's such a rom-com. Like this is no, happening. I fully pictured and then the exact at same thing. this girl's work, there's like yeah. another girl who's like madly Hiding in love with her, after her and she won't even see it because yeah. she's too blocked by this texting situation. Yeah. No, I, I fully, fully, fully feel that. Your I, barista's in love with you and you don't even yeah, notice. Because you, you you're, you're face down in your it. phone. Oh, it's so <laughs> heartbreaking. I love this movie. Sell it to Netflix. Yes. Yes. The kissing booth part two exactly yeah no I, I I think also you there's there 
I found that the people who are most likely, especially on dating apps, wanting a relationship are the people who want to meet up with you super quickly after. They don't want to text. Hey, but, what's up? Hey, we swiped right on each other. Do you want to get drinks? Yeah. And that's always what like propels it along. And even my friends who are still on dating apps say that. And the people who just want to talk, it never goes anywhere because right. then you get comfortable with like, oh, this person yeah. I've created here. What if this person doesn't not, live up to me in real exactly. life? And then there's that fear of that. So even then they just get in over their heads. But Which yeah. if you want to just have a text, sometimes you're busy and mm-hmm. it's like, this is great. This is a great yeah. situation. I want to just have a text flirtation or I want to, there are people in my life that I'm like, we just like have like texty yeah. fun times or whatever. But then like, I'm not, it's not going to be like the same type of friendship as mm-hmm. someone I see all the time. Yeah. So like if that's, fi- it doesn't sound like that's fine no. with this person though. And if it's not, then you got to go. And it's so okay for it not to be fine. Yeah, of course. Because that's not, you can enjoy, and you can also enjoy text flirting with somebody and enjoy that. But if they're not looking for the same thing as you, yeah. like you're just going to end up hurt. That's, you're going to get hurt for yeah. sure. Ugh, it's not going to be fun. And also she and might also, be catfishing Catfished? You. I was just thinking Dude, that. she might be. She's getting catfished. Yeah. Or, or yeah, either she's getting catfished or the girl's in a relationship with somebody else. Yeah. She might, yeah, she very well could be cheating. Yeah. Which is rough. Which, and then people, the argument of like, is emotional cheating a real thing? But think about this. She says that her, the girl cheated on her. Yeah, what a good what if twist. She, if she oh, was like, this is a good I've been, story. I was with this girl for five years. She cheated on me. I'm devastated. I'm the victim. Cut to, she's still with that girlfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, she's and she's getting the payback. one cheating. Or maybe maybe the girl actually did cheat and now she's getting the pay. Like she feels like she wants to get yeah. an emotional relationship. Buy it for Netflix. Yeah. Buy, buy, buy me and Megan Ranks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't Guys, cut do me it. out of this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and executive producer, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get out while you can. I mean, not while you can. You can't get out at any time. At any time. Just anyone can leave anyone at any time. Any fucking time. Isn't that freeing? It's it's honestly. <laughs> but also terrifying. <laughs> exactly how I feel. I'm being like, that's comforting. But also, what if it's not me that chooses to leave? Like when people are like, oh, but they have kids. I'm like, you can leave whenever. L- literally, you can. And anybody could leave me at any time. Any time. I went through a breakup and like people were in the, and I was really sad because I really liked him. And the, the people and people were like, oh, my God, you've been together for two years. Like, how can you leave? And I was like. And I like crying, but I was like, honestly, anyone can leave anyone at any time. It's like within his rights. Oh. Oh, should we go into the next? Hi, Megan. I'm 18. I'm from Alberta, Canada. And I was just looking for some advice about the most cacophonous past couple of months of my life. So I had been dating this guy and we were totally in love and uh, it was going great. And then about like two months in... I had this like horrible, 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 week long anxiety attack. I was bawling my eyes on my kitchen floor every day, like taking out a van, like it was fucking blueberries. And just like my dad had taken a week off work to come watch me. It was horrible. And then I started going to therapy and I started getting better. And then this whole like time I was having this anxiety attack, my boyfriend wasn't really talking to me just because like I think he thought I needed space and like we really did love each other. So, like, I understand, and he's probably, like, worried, and he was working and shit, but this last day of this anxiety attack, um, he broke up with me over text. No, he dumped me over text, um, because he's an ass, and then the morning after, he slept with this girl that he'd been talking to before we started dating, and, um, yeah, so she's my best friend's ex, and... It's uh, such a mess, but he really doesn't like her, and he doesn't want to keep sleeping with her, and she really likes him and knows he doesn't like her, so she wants to stop sleeping with him, but they don't communicate these things to each other, and it's getting so messy, and me and my ex are still sleeping together, and, like, we're, like, in the most juvenile way, trust me, I know we're still sleeping together, and I don't know why it's happening, but whatever, um... And we're still friends. And I just, I was looking to see if you think that I should, like, say something to them. That, like, this girl's gonna get her feelings hurt. And Mike's gonna give us both syphilis. So, like, maybe something should fucking get sorted out. I'm just looking for advice. Please help me. I don't know what to do. Thanks. First of all, (laughs) you're 18. I'm so confused. I'm sure that you're beautiful. Hear me out. You're 18. You're beautiful. You're never going to look better than you do right now. Get rid of this dude. Maybe. 
Mm, get I, rid I of this nose job later on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I definitely look better than I did at 18. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got some good years left you. have you. great years. What I'm saying is I'm like 30. I'm like, look, you're out to pasture. No, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you're beautiful. You're 18. You're never gonna look better than you look right now. Fuck this dude. Get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Don't be friends with him. Who cares? Yeah. This girl also presumably can make her own decisions. Yeah. Let You're not in charge of her. I understand girls supporting girls. Yes. But, and I'm glad you're not like, that girl's a hoe. But get just, mm-hmm. you get remove yours. You know, like exclude yourself from the narrative. Remove yes. yourself from the narrative. Also, that anxiety attack shit happens to me all Oof. the time. Happened to me to the point, same, my dad had to come yeah. and like take care of me. Oh, 2012, what a year. Um, oh, mm-hmm. And, uh, and so like, if someone's not going to support you through that, like, obviously you're very mature, right? You're like, he didn't have to be there for me. Like he was busy. He had his own life. That's mature of you to think I'm instead yeah. of being like, I need to be codependent with this boy. No, but he should have wanted he to be there. He should have wanted to be there. He behaved poorly. You don't have to cut him any slack. No. And, and you broke don't have up to, with her and right he, after. Right. Yeah. And you don't have to look out for him or for the other girl. Like you're acting like you're their mom. You're their mom. Yeah. You don't have to be in charge of everyone, which is which is mm-hmm. like very stressful for you at this point. Like take care of yourself. Yeah. And I'd say we we talk about this a lot of being like, I'm all for girls supporting girls, but the only time in which I think that it's okay to kind of tell someone something is if you don't gain anything from the situation. Right. But you gain that, like this, this is a vindictive thing. Like as yeah. much as like you, like as much as like there's a part of you that wants to protect this girl, it's because th- there's like, like I've dated guys who like have been absolute shit and they go, go on to date other girls. And I'm like, I want to warn them. And then I'm like, well, I want to warn them because I don't want this relationship to work out because right. I don't want this to be, it was just me that didn't work out. Yeah. I don't want that to be, yeah. Not, not, not say that there's any blame on you or whatever, but like some people's relationships, like how he treats you might not how, be how he treats her. Yeah. Unless he like punched you in the face. No. It, yeah. And that's yeah. definitely that's any different. abuse stuff. 100%. But yeah. And also if this is real syphilis, I feel like that might be a <laughs> thing. But like, also like, I just, don't just know take some pay. antibiotics just in case. I'm I also guess. really confused about who's sleeping with who. Okay, she's sleeping with her ex. She's still yeah, sleeping, she's with, sleeping the ex. with him. Okay, so I got that. Again, who you're are the 18. Other people? You're beautiful. Sleep with someone else. But who are the other people that are having sex now? So her friend's ex girlfriend mm-hmm. and her ex boyfriend. There's a love triangle. Okay, so her best friend is not getting any. He's alone. <laughs> she's alone. <laughs> no, she's fucking up. No, no, no. I, we I don't. We don't know if, if the best friend girl. is a guy or girl, and the girls and the ex is like bisexual, or if it's like you know what I mean. We don't know if the friend her is a friend. Girl. Her friend her is anybody. Could be anyone. Could be yeah. anyone. Yeah. But so that person's alone. That person's we not getting know. any. They whoever, might be getting yes, something. Whoever they're, they're, not they're not in this in circle. This, not okay, because in, in my head, I thought her best friend no. is still hooking up with his, no. his or her ex. No. Okay, no. That person has done the right thing. Yeah. They're, be, they're, at a, they're at a Buffalo Wild Wings having a time of their life. Like them. They're be like your friend. Go hang out with your go, friend. Yeah, go hang with your fucking friend. Yeah. Stop having sex with your ex. You and your friend. Leave. Go to Buffalo Wild Go to Buffalo Wild Do they have that in Canada? Uh, I don't know. I just love saying it because I, we have, my friend and I have a joke that it's our favorite straight bar. The Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to the best straight bar in LA? Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Hooters. Right. So we're like, have you ever, um, so just go with your friend to Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. Ignore all texts and calls from these other two people. Yeah, Let them live their dreams. It's so, it's just too exhausting. And I remember, I remember being like 19 and a part of it. Like my ex-boyfriend broke up. We broke up uh, the week before prom and the guy who ended up asking me to prom, I went with him because my ex-boyfriend hated him because he was also like, oh, for sure. Always flirted with me and be like, something like, you look really hot today. Yeah. My boyfriend at the time was like, the fuck dude? Like right here. Look at that. Yeah. And so Pre-nose we- Pre-nose job. Ex- oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Crushing it. Killing it, was, it. it. Crushing it. It was a small school. <laughs> um, but so, so this- the guy who asked me to prom, him and I ended up like getting together. Mm -hmm. And then my ex-boyfriend got with my prom date's ex-girlfriend. Of course. And so it was like this whole switcheroo thing. I've seen the OC. Oh God. And I remember spending so much time just being like so emotionally invested in their Their relationship relationship. Mm -hmm. that like, I like what the, I I just, it was, it's just so much wasted time that I then went went on to college and I was like, I just, all this like pent up feelings. And I go to freshman year of college. I'm like, oh, there are so many, I have so much other shit to deal with now. Who cares? Also your, your mental health is, is incapacitated. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah. You got to like, you got to recover from this anxiety attack. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time, like I had a very bad anxiety attack in 
20, 2008. And then I had another one in 2012. And then another in 2016. And the reason it happened every four years on the presidential election cycle <laughs> is, because, <laughs> is because I never took care of it the first time around. Yeah. I wasn't, I was, I would get distracted by other things. And you, you're doing that right now. You're distracting yourself with this relationship drama. And what you should be doing is going to yoga and Mm -hmm. taking medication and seeing a therapist and just like, you know, taking sound baths and like doing stuff that will like make your mental health better. And self-care doesn't have to be like emotionally treacherous all the time. And I think there's like, I, I always find if I'm going, if I'm dealing with something really shitty that I want anything that makes me happy. And I can sometimes... I will mistaken things for that make me stop thinking yeah. about mm-hmm. it for things that make me this happy. This ex-boyfriend is not medicine. No. Stop sleeping with him. He's not making you feel better. He's making you not think about it, but yes. that's not helping it. Like that's not helping the problem. And there's other things that like, you don't have to like b- spend every single day in therapy crying and like working no. through this. You can like do little things that make you happy that go don't hiking. hurt you also. Go hiking. Yeah. Like, See a movie. Yeah. Go, go take a shower. S- swim. Take a bath. Get a pet rabbit. A hundred percent. Get a dog. <laughs> get like, hang out with your friends. Go on a road trip. Like there's so many things that will like yeah. help you that won't that will also make you forget that will also help heal you yeah but that won't hurt you in the long run which not even will. forget start a journal yeah paint write write it all down yeah don't if you're gonna like text if you're gonna like meet up with the ex-boyfriend to have sex with him instead text your other friend and go to buffalo Wild yeah. <laughs> just to get, i like, don't get, work like a, for buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> at all just get like a get like a get go no actually go somewhere if they have a rewards card they should Tim do hortons that. that's yes. canadian yeah, yeah 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 you ever been to a tim hortons <laughs> caller <laughs> go there i'm sure she has i'm sure she has <laughs> or get some poutine po- poutine. poutine go poutine? get some poutine yeah and yeah live your best life and focus on yourself pet also, a moose yeah but get Pet multiple mooses. No. Canada. Mo- meese? How many moose? Meese. Meese. Is that the plural of moose? Yeah. Or is moose the plural? See, these are the types of things you could think about instead of having sex with your ex-boyfriend. They're so, the options are endless. Do you know how many episodes of this podcast we have? You can watch them all. Oh my God. Watch this. Yes. Listen to my podcast. Yes. It's called Bad With Money. Dude, you have so much, like hours of content. Yeah. We, between the two of yes. us. So much. And masturbate. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. This was helpful. I hope so. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to go on a quick break and we'll be right back. This episode of Don't Blame Me is brought to you by me promoting us on iTunes. I'm a ho for iTunes. <laughs> aren't we all uh so guys uh i love when you guys leave fantastic reviews on the apple podcast app slash itunes it really means a lot to me i enjoy reading them also this is a great place on the podcast app to tell me what your episodes have been your favorite who what guests have been your favorite what guests you'd like to come back on And if you guys left reviews on the podcast app, again, like I said, it would mean a lot to me. That's an opportunity for you to kind of vocalize how you feel and what you want to see more of guests you like and all of that stuff, because I definitely do read them when I have bad days and I don't book auditions. I won't name drop the one I didn't just book because everyone watches it. (laughs) So fun. Um, So yeah, guys, uh, leave us some reviews on the Apple podcast app. Five stars only like an Uber. And now back to the episode. Uh, Okay, guys, we are back from the break, and we're going to hop into more calls. Hi, Megan. I'm 18 years old, and I'm going to be attending college in less than a month. So at the orientation for the college that I'm going to, it happens in early June. And I met this boy who is going to be roommates with another one of my incredibly close gay guy friends. And we all just met at the orientation and hung out all day and... Honestly, I kind of fell for him, which is surprising because he's totally not my type, but I've never met anyone like him. He is so different. He is literally the funniest person I've ever met, and, like, I'm just so attracted to him. So he lives about four hours away from me and the college I'm going to, but we've been talking, like, every single day since orientation. And about a week ago, he made me a playlist with the songs that he said reminded me of him and the title of the playlist was literally for you and it made me feel really special and he's talking about how he's going to make me dinner when he moves up here and we already just had so many dates planned out for when he finally moves in 
So, needless to say, I'm in love with him. I've totally fallen for him. But randomly, after making me that playlist, he said, we're just going to be platonic friends. He sent me a text saying that. And keep in mind, this is after he's, like, openly flirted with me and said he wants to be serious with me. And he literally sent me nudes. And he randomly just brought up the name of this other girl. And he told me that he's in love with her. And so he has to be loyal to her. And he kind of just ghosted me, and we haven't texted in probably about a week now. And I don't know if this girl's going to our college, but I can't help but just compare myself to her. Like, he told me her name, and so I can, like, look her up on Instagram, and she's prettier than me. So I just am feeling really bad about myself. But, yeah. And also, on Apple Music, I can see that he shared that for her playlist her For You playlist with her as well. So I just am feeling really bad about myself. And I'm just wondering if you think I should cut this guy off or just let myself get hurt because I swear I've never met anyone as amazing with him, as amazing as him. But also he's rooming with my friend and we're in the same major. So it's really going to be hard to avoid him. I want to know where she lives and how many terrible guys she's come across that just aren't funny. That makes this guy so amazing, despite the fact that he sent her the same playlist as he sent another yeah, girl. Yeah, cut this guy off. But like, why? Cut is him it, off. But why is he so amazing? Like, what he's is he's not amazing. No, he's a piece he's of shit. Terrible. He's a piece of shit. God. He's a piece of shit. Uh, like, you don't want to win him. No. He's not a good prize to win. He's a bad prize. He, l- l- yeah. No. Like, that is you're. Also, you're going into college where there will literally be thousands of people. So many. This guy, you haven't even, you're 18. You haven't met that many people. This guy's not that great. I promise you. Uh, He's probably shitty. Uh, He's clearly shitty because he's got another girl. He's super shitty. And he's telling, that's the thing. He's telling, like, if this isn't his girlfriend or if it is his girlfriend, like, the biggest thing that like, I wish I could fucking shake people. People will tell you their intentions. Right. And he's telling you point blank, but you're listening to the other things that are more favorable that you like more. Right, exactly. As opposed to this, when you're yeah. treating those as fact and you're treating this as maybe not fact. Right. This is also a fact. He's saying this. So three months down the road, when you're completely invested in him and you've slept together and mm-hmm. you're asking for a relationship, he's like, no, I told you. I like, I don't I, want. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you knew because I told you this. So then it becomes on you because you, you did something something in, in despite in in spite of knowing that yeah he it, it's <sighs> not like it's not worth it he's sucks uh objectively as a person yes and like and like to be like oh I, this is what i don't understand and uh, please be an ambassador to straight, oh. pe- straight people for me i mean we're okay. not that great <laughs> are here's my I question <laughs> are straight people okay because no <laughs> Right. Straight. I will say something. Straight white men are so not okay at all. Yeah, I, but are but are straight couples okay? Because it mm. seems to, because okay, it seems to me like a lot of times it's girls who are like, I feel bad about myself. I want to be with this guy. Why doesn't he want to be with me? And he sucks. And yeah. the girl is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, but so like she's like, I feel bad about myself comparing myself to this other girl. But like. But like this guy is terrible. Yes. What you don't want, like you want him to want you. Mm-hmm. But as soon as he, you were together, he would treat you like shit. Yeah. So do, you, you want to be good enough for this person who is not good. Does that make sense? Well, no. And that's and, and I, I feel like I, that's every straight girl I know is just like I want to be good. I why aren't I good enough for this literal like sentient bag of potatoes to that's like me? Genuinely, exactly what it is because. So as opposed to big dick energy, there is yeah. straight white male ego. Yeah. That is this the most like I God, I like look at my straight white male friends and yeah. I'm like, if I had that confidence and that ego, mm-hmm. and that's what that is. It's that mm-hmm. difference in a relationship of I mean, not to say that like, I mean, like I, as a girl, I, as a female, I'm like very insecure, but mm-hmm. especially when I was younger and then you see a guy who you feel like you, you feel like you're in a rom-com and you're being plucked out of obscurity. Mm-hmm. And even if he's not cool and not cute and has a terrible personality, he has this confidence that only comes with like white, priv- like white, like yeah. cis male privilege. Confidence. And that's what that is. It's like this weird thing where you guys are supposed to be in like a, in like this, like pluck from obscurity thing. And then it's that she doesn't know she's beautiful. Yeah, take her glasses off. And then some guy is going to come and be like, 
here's a magical playlist for you. Yeah. I've chosen you out of everyone. Mm-hmm. Like I, but like, it's like my female friends are like gorgeous, like put all this effort into yeah. how they look like so smart, like accomplished, like have amazing, you know, jobs or accomplishments. And then they're like, why won't my unemployed, like <laughs> literal garbage bag mm-hmm. with legs boyfriend propose to me? Yeah. And it's like, but what? Like you're- it's- what? It's like the weirdest cycle in the world. And it's yeah. a thing. It's a total thing. Yeah. I, 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 you would, don't want him. You just no. are sad that he didn't want you, but like you're 18. Again, you're 18. You're never going to be more beautiful than you are right now. <laughs> you might be. <laughs> you should be dating 60 dudes and you should, and you should be leaving them all on red. Mm-hmm. Like you should <laughs> not, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Like also coming from somebody who dated someone she met at college orientation did not work out well. No, I, 10 out of 10 would not recommend that. No, my but, college girlfriend I met during orientation, but it yeah, was like, it's wh- the first car you see. You exactly. first don't, don't, don't drive yeah, that you off got the a lot. Test, you got to test drive. You got to test drive them all. Exactly. And also I'm just going to put this out there. I'm going to not to, for all of you hopeless romantics, I don't relate to you at all, which you might've seen in my face when she was talking about the dates and stuff. If any guy is telling you things that sounds like it's too good to be true and he makes you a playlist and everything just feels out of a movie, right. it's fake. Yes. That is not genuine at all. Especially if you don't know the guy, because a real true guy who's looking for a really great relationship is going to guard his emotions and read you. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to just go above and beyond. Like, I, I love you. I'm Do you so know what into it's called? you. Okay. So it's is an abuse. It's Oh. No, it's an abuse tactic and it's called love bombing. Oh. And it's what an abusive person does where they shower you with love. Oh. I've, I've experienced this. Yeah, that sounds Shower you with familiar. love. So romantic. Dozen yeah. roses, helicopter mm-hmm. ride, fucking the bachelor experience. Like yeah. literally like you're perfect. You're amazing. You're wonderful. You can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Then like three weeks later, they're like, why did you think we were dating? Oh yeah. Oh God. And then they own you. Yeah. And then yeah. they own you forever. Uh, it's a, fa- they, they, they lure you in with like a false sense of security. Yep. Like these, like these gestures and, and these you, things mean that. And then that. you are gaslit. You yeah. feel like, oh, you're right. They never said that we were dating. Yeah. So I was with someone for such a long time who like love bomb, love bomb, love bomb, love bomb. And then I was like, and then I was like, oh, so we're together. And then he was like, what? I'm seeing like 15 other people. Why would we be together? And you're like, oh, okay. Oh. I guess actions don't speak louder than words. Right. Or like yeah. what, what? Uh, like what what are you getting out of this yeah and well, then it's, it's the, like it's the oh, adoration allison always says if some if a guy is overly romantic towards you then he's that way towards everyone every, exactly that's exactly that's what, what I he think. does to every girl and so the the fact that as soon as you said the playlist i was like he sent this playlist to yeah. somebody else like, also for he probably you did not make it for her yeah no, to for begin you with. Yes. it doesn't even say your her name. name yeah, yeah. It's just a t- like a standard, typical douchey guy move, which this to me just screams small dick energy. Correct. A guy who maybe wasn't super cute when he grew up in like middle school, high school, and then got cute last year of high school. But everyone from high school was like, no, I still think of like Jerry as the guy mm-hmm. with like, who like wore Tevas with socks. And then right. he goes to college and he gets this like hot guy ego. And then he's like, let me take everything all at once. Right. And he's throwing out all of these like false romantic gestures that he sees from movies that nobody who's been in a real serious relationship would ever do that because they're going to guard their heart. I also think if you're 18 year old boy and your only idea of romance is from movies, then you kind of think this is how I have to behave. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not that into the girl. Totally. Like this is the steps that let's say, let's take this guy's side for one second. He like, I'm sure he thinks if you are interested in a girl, you have to go above and beyond because there's no, there's not really any, there's no movie in like, and Mm -hmm. then we dated. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then we broke up, but it was fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like in if you're 18, it's like it's Romeo and Juliet were fucking crazy in love and mm-hmm. everything is insane or nothing. Yeah. No, and that does that 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 does make sense. I just think like you the idea of you being like should I just commit to getting hurt? I think no. there's so much things of like life lessons that you're going to get hurt, but there needs to be something you actually benefit from. Mm-hmm. And like it, date someone older, let them pay for everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but like, you're going to get hurt regardless. Like this isn't like, let me speed up this life lesson and get hurt now in a heartbreak. And then I'm going to meet my yeah. husband next. Like you're going to go through so many heartbreaks. There are ones that you should avoid. There are unavoidable heartbreaks. And there's like clear signs yeah. that you're walking into like a garbage pit. Like yeah. don't fucking do it. Like get rid of this dude. Yeah. And it's too also, soon. let me, let me give you some advice from my life experience. He sent those nudes to everybody. Everybody. Mm-hmm. They might not those even be his. Those are recycled nudes, baby. They're, yeah. They might not even be his. Yeah. But they are definitely recycled nudes. For and sure. And everything that you've been, like everything that you think about him 
is not him. Like this, yes. like he's great. And he's like, no what guy you've ever, uh, any other guy you've met. That is an act. That is a performance he's doing to everyone. You've also met 12 guys. Literally, you've met four guys. You've met four guys And one of them is gay and your best yeah, friend. like chill out. Yeah, no, no, no. There's, there are so many other great people. And also not to like throw the- Make him hold that day's newspaper in the news. <laughs> <laughs> like, right like, above his death. Right above his life. Like, right, proof yes. of life. Like, it's a kid, <laughs> like- like a kidnapping. Really, yeah. Yes. That's what you need. That's, all like the, that's the only way I accept nudes <laughs> yeah, now yeah. is if it has <laughs> that day's date and your name. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I, I respect that. Yeah. I love that. I will trust to, nobody. Right, and he had to take the extra effort because who gets newspapers delivered anymore? Exactly. Yeah. 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 one. to yeah. find yeah. one. No, he has to write like it's yeah. a Reddit AMA. Like yeah. His name, the date, date. his handle, hold I it up, your name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And we need like full, full water focus, everything, yeah, everything. I need to see marked. everything clear. Um, <laughs> I love it. I, yeah, I would say also there's not to pull like the college reputation thing in with this, but I wish I hadn't jumped into a relationship immediately in college because Absolutely. then after we broke up, it was like, everybody was like, oh, I thought you were still with this per Like, yeah, it became like, I was known as this rather guy's than, girlfriend. Yes, rather than being me. known as yourself and starting over in school and being known yeah. as yourself. And like making my own friends, not just yep. making his friends. Then we broke up and then I'm like, fuck, I have no, of, not really any of my own friends. And like, nobody knows me for anything except Great this advice. guy's ex-girlfriend. Yes. So yeah, I would. And then also, then you're also, the reason why he's so great is because you can't see the contradictions he's probably going to make mm -hmm. in person or see him doing this to other girls. You're only seeing him over, like talking to him over text message. The second mm -hmm. you get to school and you see that he's a total sleazeball and that he's doing this to everybody, you're not going to like him. Okay, on to the next call. I'm 23 and I was, I wanted an unbiased opinion about my relationship. So I'm engaged and we've been engaged for almost a year now. But, um, uh, like, I'm canon. We've been trying for a baby. And I know it's, like, a little more of a mature subject than you're used to, like, receiving. But we've been trying for a baby, and we've had no luck. So we've actually gone to, like, fertility doctors. Well, the beginning of it, anyway. And um, this is where the issue comes in, is that I'm going through more fertility doctors because I'm a woman. I have to, I have more steps and processes than him where he has, you know, an afternoon and then a reading of his results. And the problem is, is that he's procrastinated it because I don't think he wants to receive the bad news if it is his side that's not letting us have a kid. Um, I've tried to talk to him about it, but he just seems to kind of, oh, yeah, I'll book it and I'll, I'll get to it when I can, but then just kind of blows it off. Um, so is it, like, my part to nag him or <laughs> should I just kind of go with the flow and deal with my stuff and then once my stuff's done, push him a little bit more or should I just leave it entirely? Well, there's a lot of masculinity at play, right? Like he doesn't want to find out yeah. if his if he's shooting blanks. He doesn't want to find out because he thinks it means something about his. He's like less of a man. Masculinity, which it really. But are they trying? How long have they been trying? Yeah, it really. But it really doesn't mean know. anything. Thing is, if you you take care of yourself, you deal with your own stuff on this side, and then if it turns out that you're actually able to have a child, and yeah. it's and it's on, and then you'll pretty much know on his end. But you do want like the medical diagnosis yeah. or whatever. But he needs to not like this is a group effort. He needs to not take it personally. What if he doesn't want a kid right now. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of real what thing. I was that's too. what I'm like. I think that there, you got to have like that's like a hard conversation to have with somebody. Yeah, like, do you not want to have a kid, or are you nervous that you are unable to have a kid? Yeah, and also like, do you not want to have a kid right now? Like, because it also can be one of those things like. How long did they say they were dating? A year and a half. They've been, they've been, they've engaged, been engaged for, for a, year. a year and a half. But I think also like a lot of the time when you, at, at least like when I was younger, like I had a totally skewed idea of where my life would be at at 25. Now that I'm older and in a relationship, I've like 
those, those expectations I've had, I've changed them. I've been mm-hmm. like, oh no, I don't want this at this age mm-hmm. now. But I wonder, are you holding on to these things that you wanted regardless of the fact that like maybe your partner isn't ready for that yet? Yeah. Or maybe he thought he was ready and he changed his mind and he's scared to be like, I'm just not really ready to have a kid right now. And I want to enjoy being like, I want to get married and enjoy being married. Yeah. Where's the fire? Yeah. Why are you, why are you not married yet? No. Also, don't you want to have a, a wedding? little time with each other yeah. and like and a like, wedding? Do you know how hard it is to get size for a wedding dress when you're pregnant? Yeah. Like you're not married yet. Like get married. Don't have to, j- the alterations are so expensive. Right. And I know like a girl we, who got married when she was pre- like, she got married, she was engaged, had her wedding dress, got pregnant mm-hmm. and was pregnant while they were and like literally spent so much fucking money yeah. on alterations every single, like every two months. Yeah. I had friends. Yeah. I had friends that, that I, I'm not sure what, I never really asked what the rush was, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't really like have time together. Like you're, you make it about yourselves, like yeah. make the wedding about yourselves. Yeah. And also you, you've been engaged for a year and a half. Maybe put this effort that you're putting into trying to have kids right now into planning a wedding and yeah. like having a wedding um, and or even just like, getting married. If you don't want to have a big wedding, just get married. Cause I would and say, spend time with each other. Yeah. And like, like, you don't know what's going on with him. Maybe he, maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe he doesn't really want to mm-hmm. have a kid right now. Maybe he, even if he does want to have a kid, even if the, it's the truth and he is very scared of finding out that he uh, can't have children, that, that's your partner. You love him. Like yeah. that's a real fear. And maybe that's a fear too, because you're not married yet. And this is something that you really want. And what if he's like, well, fuck, what if I can't have kids and she's and not she going to want it? Me. Yeah. Right. Like you, like, it's maybe- not just about hitting the benchmarks yeah. and the goals because he's a person as well. No, so like totally. if you, I think sometimes I see women, friends of mine, they get a guy, mm-hmm. they have the guy, they're like, great. I have the guy. And then they run towards all the goals. Mm-hmm. But like, then the guy is not even humanized. To them. No, he doesn't have a cho- like. He doesn't really have a choice. choice he matter. doesn't have like he's like check in with him if, if he is scared. I understand that it's like damaging your timeline. Yeah, but if he is scared, that's your partner and he's your friend. Yeah, like, like you love him. Like if he's scared, like that's legitimate. Like it's not like his fear isn't like ruining my timeline of like engaged, married, yeah. pregnant. Like. he might have a different timeline or Mm -hmm. he might like you make him feel better. Yeah. And also a spooked guy is probably not going to be the best dad to a baby either. Like you want to have, you guys both need to be ready. And I would also say, I think if you were older, like he needs to be, until you have a kid, your partner should be your priority. And right now it feels like like the kid, the non-existent baby is a priority over him. Yeah. And that if I were him, I also probably would be like holding off having a kid to be like, I need more attention. Like, hi, what happened to me? Weren't we excited about us and getting married and engaged? And I'd also say too, you're both so incredibly young that the chance that they're, you're like the most fertile you'll ever be for the next couple Mm of years. So there, it's not like you're running out of time to do that. So I think like that to me, just, it, it just seems like you're skipping I understand wanting to be a young parent and all of that. Yeah, sometimes There's, a lot of people want to yeah. grow, like want don't want to be too old when they have kids. And I yeah. totally get that. But I think, especially going to like fertility doctors and doing all of this stuff, like that's something that unless you've been trying for like years, years yeah, mo- like you're so, so incredibly young. It's really just, that to me just sounds like it's, you're putting the focus on that as opposed to like the relationship you already have. And that needs to be a priority and just talk to him about it because either he does, there's, yeah, there's two and, things. And make, and make sure you're not talking to him and being like, why are you holding me up? No, like, not at all. Talk to him Check like, in, like on our, your okay? relationship. Is he okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Are you both okay? You know? And also what if it, the same thing, if this was, if this was you, like if you were the one with fertility issues and he wanted a kid so bad right. and then what if he's Wouldn't like, you'd well, be scared. Yeah. yeah. You'd be terrified. And also if you're with somebody who prioritizes having their own, like conceiving and carrying their own like child so much. And if you couldn't do that, wouldn't you also fear that maybe he would walk away if that was his number one priority? I think if you have that conversation, you can then still tell him, be like, you know what? I'm totally with you on that. But like, we've already started to go to a fertility doctor. I'd love to just check in to know when we want to have a family, if we're okay. And be like, I'm not gonna, I'm not leaving because of this. No. Yeah. 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 And make him feel supported like that because that's just, it's a lot. And also I just want to know why you're not married yet. You know? 
Like You're, what's the what's hold the up? Rush? Where's what's the, the hold up? Yet what's the rush? Like why aren't you married yet? Yeah. And so why are you trying to check all these like boxes? Yeah. yeah. If you're not married yet, Some why are you trying? Some have different priorities. I always feel like I'm but like But then why would you get engaged? That, you know? I don't know. Like either have a baby. I don't. I, don't. I forget that people um, like that that's not that young in some parts of the, the country and that like people have you know they're like oh my god well I have to check all these boxes before I'm 25 or else I'm like just <sighs> useless to the world which is bizarre because I think there's like I I'm I don't know if it's just because we're like LA coastal yeah. elites that mm-hmm. we're like what you can have 35 it's well, fine that's, you know it's the I mean? craziest thing my boyfriend and I been, my boyfriend and I oh words have been together since I was tw- we've been together for like three years and mm-hmm. I'm 25 now mm-hmm. the amount of tweets from people and now the amount of like older adult friends who are being like so even my dad will be like so when's uh when's he putting a ring on it and I'm like what <laughs> I'm sorry that doesn't happen till you're 30 over yeah. here like what and it's like it's so odd to me that people would think that that's something where I'm like I, in my mind, if we got engaged, I feel like every comment would be like, oh my God, you're too young. Why would you get engaged? Right, like right, that's right. my response. Right. But it's, it's not like that in everywhere, like mm-hmm. everywhere at all, which is so, it's just, it Well, I think they're mind. putting it, the pressure on timeline versus age, which is interesting. Like mm-hmm. we don't know how long they've been together. True. But like my sister has two friends who have been together since high school and they just got married. And so technically they, they've been together for 10 years. Mm-hmm. They they're just 25. Happened, yeah, they, they've been yeah. together for 10 years. If I've been with someone for 10 years, it's like, okay, probably you'll yeah. get married. But in my, but then in reality, I'm like, you're 25 though. Yeah, it's lifestyle. For me, it's so much more about my yeah. lifestyle when I'm, when I feel comfortable mm-hmm. doing anything. It's not about like, my age doesn't determine how mature That's, or ready I right. feel for anything. Right. It's just like where my life is at, at that point. Yeah. And those two, I'm like, yeah, they should probably get married. They're yeah. like a weird Corey and Topanga situation. Oh. But like, <laughs> I almost did it for my eighth birthday. That was the only thing. I actually, I think a couple years in a row for my birthday, the only thing I asked was to legally change my name to Topanga. Wow. Didn't happen. But that's all I wanted. She sounds like she's probably a Cancer or a Pisces. A Pisces. Yeah. 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 I bet you're a Pisces. Or a Taurus because she's trying to like micromanage everything. Oh, that could be true. That could be true. Let us know. Call Let us in. know. Yeah, yeah, please do. <laughs> do we have more questions? We've got producer's corner now. <gasps> What's ooh, that? Ooh, ooh. Wow, good question. You want, you want to take it away? You want to explain? Uh, sure. <laughs> producer's corner is where I pick uh, either like my favorite call of the week. It could be um, a callback of somebody updating us on their information or someone else calling back with counter advice okay. to what we did. So ooh, okay. um, this week we have someone with counter advice. So <gasps> this is from the episode with Lee Newton. And um, this caller is calling about about the girl who um, her boyfriend thought that they would end up together later, but he wants to go out and figure out himself Mm. and date. So is Wild Oats. Sure. Hi, Megan. I was just wanting to, I guess, um, give some counter advice to some advice that I've heard on the podcast. Um, This is mostly inspired by the episode with Lee Newton, um, where you were talking to the girl um, who boyfriend was like I guess feeling kind of stuck in their relationship or feeling like you know he was worried that he hadn't been with anyone else um so I guess I just wanted to say to that girl and a bunch of others um ethical non-monogamy is a thing um monogamous relationships aren't the only way to have relationships Um, exploring outside of your relationship with other people and, you know, making connections with others, whether they're emotional or physical or both, is a wonderful thing that can happen. Um, Obviously, it's not for everybody. It takes a lot of communication and trust. And, you know, of course, there's going to be feelings of jealousy, but those are easy to manage. Um, But I guess, I don't know, I just wanted to put out there that being with only one partner isn't the only way to do it. Um, So I just encourage everybody to keep an open mind, do research. Um, Shan Boudram on YouTube has a lot of really amazing videos about open relationships. And I think it's worth looking into for a lot of people because there are many, many ways to love Um, Monogamy isn't the only way. Uh, I'm non-monogamous. Mm-hmm. My, uh, I don't think I've 
I don't think I've been in a monogamous relationship, like fully monogamous in a decade, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is like, it, it's not for everybody. And it does take like a lot of um, talking about stuff and, and also not being selfish. It takes a yeah. lot of not being selfish. It also takes two willing participants. Like, yes. Two, two willing people participants. who want to, who are both on the same page. With and it. that you're not doing it to get away with something or you're not doing yeah. it to be, um, or to prove a point to too. prove a point and you're not doing it to, uh, like you have to, you have to be able to not read, like not try to take advantage of stuff. Like I, my girlfriend and I were somewhere and I was interested in someone and I was like, I was like, I'm gonna go make out this person. And she was like, great. I went and made out with them. And then, uh, then my girlfriend trying to be mm-hmm. like supportive was like, oh, you should go like go home with them. And I was like, no, I don't need to. And yeah. she was like, go, no, you're like, go, yeah, like, I'm cool. I'm cool. Like, go home. And I could tell that she was not cool. Yeah. <laughs> and if I was like a lesser, if I was like more selfish or yeah. if I was like using it to take advantage or whatever, I would have been like, peace. Yeah. But I was like, I'm fine. There's, mm-hmm. this is not do or die. There is no situation in which like it is worth hurting your feelings. Totally. So I was like, so we went home. And then the next day she was like, I'm glad you didn't go home with them. And I was like, of course you are. Yeah. Like, I could tell. Like, yeah. Don't it's it takes it's a lot of like reading your partner and also like you you can take them at their word but you also a little bit have to be like it's not all about me no yeah and and I, that's hard to get to that place yeah and I think I think like also it's just I think it's worth anybody who's like interested in that talking about that and I think like I've had friends who've like asked me my opinions on this because mm-hmm. they they've been with I've had friends who've been in open relationships that were more along the lines of being like, we're just going to break up, but we're going to like right. slowly yeah. break up versus like, I, and Which it, is am not, I wrong in the sense that like, do you feel like there's a difference between the term open relationship and non-monogamous relationship? Sort of. It depends. I mean, it's all different. Like I used to identify as polyamorous. I don't know that that is the case anymore. I've had boyfriends and girlfriends at the same time mm-hmm. or two boyfriends or two girlfriends, whatever. Um, but now I feel like time management wise, I just like can't make that work. (laughs) Um, but so I've like shifted more towards non-monogamy or open relationship, but it depends. Like some people are in open relationships where they don't tell each other anything. Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. My friend did that. And I don't understand that. That That would drive me insane. It was a segue for them to break up and they both knew it. They just didn't. That would drive me crazy. They didn't want to give up on something until they knew there were other things out there. And they both were kind of okay with it. But I've also had friends who've talked to me about like, as a girl being like, what are your opinions on Mm -hmm. this? And I'm like, I've, I think you, and what I've always told them, I was like, it's the same thing of being like, you can't, if you want to introduce this into your relationship with whoever you're dating, Mm -hmm. this, A, it probably should have been something that you might have, this shouldn't be sparked from the fact that you are just like wanting to like you're just like not that into your partner anymore yeah like it has to come from that the thing that people don't understand is that it has to be about you and your partner so like anytime that it's been in that it that I've done non-monogamy with people um it's about us Mm -hmm. it's about like so that's why not talking about it doesn't make sense a lot to me but like it's been about like oh, how did your date go? Tell me about it. Or like, I'm prioritized or like my girlfriend is prioritized over this Mm -hmm. person I'm going to make out with. Or like, you know, like compersion instead of jealousy where compersion is when instead of being jealous, you're happy that they're sleeping with someone else. So you're happy to hear about it or you're, Mm -hmm. or it informs your sex life. So like I've dated people where like they go off and fuck someone or I go off and fuck someone and then we talk about it and Mm -hmm. then that makes us fuck each other. Like there's like elements of it where it has to be about you guys at the end at the yeah. core. And it's like, not the unknown. It's not you thinking yeah. about like what potentially could yeah. have happened and all or that I want, stuff. Or they have met each other or like we've gone out to dinner, the three of us or yeah. like, and they're not necessarily interested in each other. I've had situations where uh, like my boyfriend and I had a girlfriend and we were both seeing her mm-hmm. or I had a girlfriend and a boyfriend and they did, they were friends, but they didn't hook up with each other yeah. or like, uh, you know, it's like all different kinds of situations and it's just very individualized, Mm -hmm. but it's never, I don't like the type of non-monogamy where you don't tell each other. No. I always like, I always like it kind of to be like a big discussion, but I also, you can't just, if your partner's like, Hey, I don't want you to hook up with this one person. Can you not like, or like, I'm not, I don't trust this person or I don't feel respected by this person. Can you, can you not like, 
then you have to- Because your partner is still not. your priority. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I think there's there's relationship anarchy where you're dating multiple people mm-hmm. and it's everyone's kind of on the level playing field. A lot of what I do is like primary partner, secondary partner yeah. or or two primary partners or yeah. whatever. Um, but there's different, like all different ways to do it. You can read a book called The Ethical Slut. That's like a really good, a good book name. about non-monogamy. It's catchy, right? Yeah, I like that. But basically like, yeah, it's just, in my mind, it always comes back to, it has to be about something cool and fun and like mm-hmm. that you and your partner are doing together. That it you're has both to be, into. Yeah, it has to be about you both. Well, that's like my fear though, is the caller, it was her boyfriend wanting to not mm-hmm. be with someone for the rest of forever. Mm-hmm. And or like not wanting to settle down with like the first girl that he had like all of his like first things with. And mm-hmm. that's my fear though too, though. Like if she... As, as much as like I'm fully, uh, totally in favor of everybody doing what they want sexually, yeah. I just don't want her or anybody to be like, I feel like I'm losing somebody. Let me give you the free reign to have sex with other right. people because that means I won't lose you. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, if you're compromising what you what your comfortability for anything, yeah. it's never going to end up well. Yeah. And you don't have to. If you have a partner who wants to to be with other people and you're okay with that, but you don't feel like, well, if he's out doing something, I should be doing totally. something. Read. Catch yeah. up on TV. All there's the been, shows he hates. There's been times where I, like, my partner has, like, gone out and been like, I'm going to go, like, hook up with someone. And I've been like, amazing. It's spa night for me. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, um... Sometimes also it's like- It's not a competition. No. Yeah. And and sometimes like it's been taking the pressure off, like where I'm like, look, I'm super busy for the next month. Like yeah. I can't see you as much as you would want to see me. Why don't you get that old fuck bunny back yeah. on the line? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, it, there's plenty of different ways. But I also think like it's hard to introduce someone to it who isn't naturally inclined to it. Yeah. Well, that's it for our episode. Thank you so much for having me. Oh this gosh. is so fun. Thank you for being on. You were so great. Come back. <sighs> okay. I wonder what it would be like if you and Allison were on at the same time. We disagree on everything. I know. That's what I'm kind of curious. Mm-hmm. She says I don't have enough red flags that I'm oh. sort of just like, whatever. <laughs> she was very decisive about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very decisive. That's what our channel is like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know me. Big fan. Uh, well, where can people find you on the internet? Or uh, not on the internet? Sure. Uh, I'm at Gabby Road on Instagram. Um, no longer then, on Twitter. No longer on Twitter. And then um, I have a podcast called Bad With Money, uh, which is out now. There's three seasons. And then uh, Bad With Money is about to be a book and that's available for pre-order. And the Bad With Money book comes out in January. But pre-order it now, please, so that my publisher likes me. Um, and that's like a, a financial book, but it's not yelling at you. It's not, it's not condescending. It's a, it's, it's a financial book for the rest of us. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's great. Well, now we can both promo our books because your book comes out in January. My book comes out in February. Hey, what's your book called? It's called You're Not Special. Well, I'm going to pre-order your book. Thanks. I'll pre-order your book. Thanks. Although you seem real scared for people to read it. I'm really scared for people to read it. Okay. It's just too personal. I fucked up in that. I mean, but you should read, read books. Pre-order our books. Pre-order our books. Um, and yeah, and uh, you can check out Melissa and I's. Our socials are in the description as always. Mm-hmm. And um, if you guys have shit in your life that you need some advice on, give us a call at 310-694-0976. And if you're an international listener, send us an email with an audio file at meganpodcast at gmail.com. And if you haven't watched the episode, watch it on YouTube and even listen to it on uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, or uh, the R, uh, go to don'tblameme.show to listen to the podcast. Subscribe there. Leave us a review. And yeah, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me, produced, directed, and edited by Melissa DeMont. Post-production sound by Chris Henry, production assistant Julie Carley, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I'll see you guys next week. And don't blame me if your life, you know, completely fucks up before then. (laughs) Oh.